it's not it's not so pashut to be out in a light, night like tonight. So we got to make the learning and the davening and the singing extra deep, extra special, extra extra meaningful. A bunch of extras. Shabbos, was it Rosh Chodesh Adar? I don't remember. I think it happened in Rosh Chodesh Adar. Um, this nigun came down a few days later, and just the tefillah of Shomer Yisrael right now is a very strong thing because we're not. We're right before something. We we understand that something needs to happen. Um, if I get distracted, it's because I didn't turn off my red alert, and obviously it's going on every second, you know. Right now, they just in the Soroka Hospital in Beersheba. They just moved away all the tinakot and the pagia, all the babies that are in the neonatal ward, to already move them into a <clears throat> into a safe place. So that should, you know, the, only for that, that only because that has to happen to precious Jewish babies being born in Eretz Yisrael. Hashem should reveal His kingdom, His malchus, and give those that. Uh, for the sake of his name and the love of his people and the love of MS and the love of humanity, all evil should be wiped out by the end of this night. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Pashut wiped out. And that no ch- no Jewish child, no child, what we do is for the name of the sake of the whole world. <clears throat> we have to remember that. And uh, all that all that we do, Bezrat Hashem, should be for the Met, the Met, the Met, a Shmira right now in Am Yisrael. Real Shmira. And um, all the, the learning we're doing tonight is also for the Yilui Neshama of Yoel Yaakov Ben Shlomo Zichonon Livracha, who is your excited tonight. Tehen Yishmasa Tzrua B'Tzrua Chaim. So this nigga came down right after the um, Fogel Massacre. Shoyim Eshoyim Yisrael Shmai Yisrael, 
strong and tonight's learning and tonight we're going to be doing we're going to go into this world of Rachel Imenu Ramama Rachel remember there was there was a duyot of chayalim the testimony of chayalim when they had gone into Gaza last time <coughs> Beda Hashem none of them should have to go in ragli everything should happen from above not one Jewish life is worth the risk of going in on foot you could take care of business from the top but when they went into Gaza last time and um it was a mamish, it's a kanas nefash, it's crazy, crazy. It's all these testimonies of chayalim that were, they gave over Edus that they saw Rachel Imenu uh, appearing to them in different crazy, like, mysterious alleyways and houses in Gaza, telling them, don't come in here and go through there. It's mamish saving their lives. So our mama Rachel, she's very, 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 very active right now. Mamish right now, as we're speaking. She always was. We have the privilege of learning about someone who's buried about seven minutes from where we're sitting right now, which is out of this world. Our chavra really do, especially a few of our chavra, they really do take advantage of that, the fact that Mama Rachel is basically there. Jerry and Chomish just settle there, I think, and Gever Rachel, that's, that's where they're, they're at most of the time anyway. So Mama Rachel, where, where is she? What is she where, where does she come to us this year, 2018? How badly, badly, badly do we need our Mama Rachel, and to understand our Mama Rachel, <clears throat> to understand what the Torah tells us, and what, our, what, our, what, our, what, 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 what they don't tell us, what the Torah doesn't tell us about her, really, really will help us, I think, know something very important. When to be quiet, and when to be loud. When to be silent, when you're going through what you're going through in life, the whole avoda, 
of being silent. Sometimes there's moments of absolute silence. And then sometimes there's a, the avoda is the exact opposite. When to protest, when to scream, when to cry. And when to know, when to do each of them is the whole trick here. Because there are moments where the avoda is, emuna means I'm going through such torture, I'm quiet. Vaidom Aaron, there is a concept like this. But there's also a concept of what? How can you be putting me through whatever I'm going through? We get mixed up quite often between timing of the two things. Not the importance of each. We know that each has its own element of importance. But it's really a timing issue that we see that Rivka, uh, sorry, Rachel, through the help of her husband, is going to help us become masters of timing. How to just say, you know, you have, you have friends that mamish know all the right things to say, right? But in all the wrong times. Do you have friends like that? They know exactly what to say and exactly in the wrong time when to say what to say what. Rachel Imenu is the one who will be teaching us how to say what, when, but she needs Yaakov Avinu to really help her. And remember what we say with Rachel and Leah. Shte and Banu is Beis Yisrael. Rachel and Leah both built the houses of Am Yisrael. Leah is the mother of Mashiach. She's the mother of Yehuda and a few others as well. But Rachel, the mother of Yosef and Binyamin, she's coming to teach us very, very, very important things. And I think that if we can, can really uh, tap into the concept of timing, we'll have a much easier time feeling aligned with the Rebona Shleilam's clock. But the bonus Shem's watch. So, I have here what we're going to be doing tonight. Hopefully, is a little piece from the Ishbitzer. This is the three, three, four lines from the Mei a few lines from Reb Shlomo, and if there's enough time, there is a paragraph from Rav Biederman last year, Rav Biederman's Torah, that I saw that will really help us tie it all together. If we don't have time to do it um, inside, I'll try to just read it from the outside. But the Meshilach, this Meshilach, by the way, is one of my favorite Meshilachs in the world. Are there enough copies? Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Mashilach is the first Mashilach I ever learned from Rav Weinberger. I had bought this, the first tape I ever bought from Rav, from, from Rav Moshe Weinberger. And it was on, um, it was from this webpage, and they sent me these cassette tapes that my brother in law had probably worked on. And this is the first Torah I ever heard from Rav Weinberger teaching the Mashilach inside. So it's a big schuss to learn at least the beginning of it. So the Mashilach on Vayetze says like this Shema Gedola Lea, the Shema Ktana Rachel. The names. The name of the older sister was Leah, and the name of the younger sister was Rachel. But you know that Apid the Midrash, they were twins, right? Did you know that? Leah and Rachel? So Leah, because she came out first, she would cry all the time because she thought she was destined to be with the one that came out first with the other set of twins, which was Esav. It's one of the reasons why she was crying all the time. Itaba Midrash. So the Midrash in Kohelis Rabbah says like this. Shlosha Shemos Yesh Adam. Man has three names. Listen to this beautiful piece. Echad Shekaru Lo Aviv V'Ima. One of the names is the name given to him or her by their parents, that which the parents named them with. Echad Shekorim Lo Acherim. A name that friends call you. Could be here that he means a nickname. Ve'echad Ma Shekana La'atzma. And another name is a name that you acquired for yourself. So to begin to delve into the depths of the second two would take us forever, and that's why I'm just sticking to, to the first name over here. Meaning the name, what your friends call you, and the name that you acquired for yourself in this world, like a shame tov, that's not, one of that, that's not what we're talking about tonight. We're actually going to be speaking about the names that were given to us by our parents. Now, our parents, we know that giving us names is a level of prophecy. And what do we know about um, the names Rachel and Leah? Who, who, where did that come from? Where did those names come from? Mistama, like if we just had to assume. 
Who named them Rachel and Leah? Oh. L- uh, Lavan, right? Lavan, it's okay. It's the L. It's L, you're over 40, and it's, and it's 8 p.m. I know what it's like. It's fine. It's, it's our life. Baruch Hashem. It's great. It's great. You've been up for, 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 for 13 hours already. 14 hours. Shema Gedola Leah Shema Ketana Rachel. Who gave these names? Lavan did. So look what he, look how the Ishbitzer explains why we choose names for our kids, whether we realize it or not, and how back in the day when they used to get their names, it was actually much more, um, there was much more of a chokhmah to it. Third, a second line. Biur ha'inyan, ma shekorin lo avi ve'imo, the whole concept of what parents call their children, ha'inu ma shenikar bitzulat avlad, miyad kshehu nolad, ma yiyeh. When the baby comes out, there's some kind, you shouldn't come up with names until you see your child. You know that, right? Even if you have all these promises to Bubbies and Zadies, until you see your kid, you're not supposed to come. I'm sorry if I'm bringing up any sort of subjects right now. But it really should be only once they're in the world because you have to get a hacker. It's, am- it's amazing. It says about a man who shouldn't, uh, when it comes to Kiddushin, when it comes to sanctifying a woman and marrying her or, or, or agreeing to marry her, you have to see her. Why is that a chiddush? We go on, in our, in our day, well, of course you see her dates and everything. But back then, shiduchim were just shiduchim, and that's it. No, you have to see each other. Achir ena, to do kiddushim. So, I always think about this over here. Like when it comes to a name of a child, even if like, uh, I mean, your name was pretty common and modern in your time. It's a no, little, no. Huh? No, it no. went out, yeah. Ilana. It went out, but it was. It was around yeah. then. Right. Now you have no one. Yeah, not, 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 it's like if you called your daughter uh, Judy today. No, you know, no one really calls their daughters Judy. It, what? It's no. Ke'ilu. It, it went away. So, but he's saying over here, even if, like, that's in the air, you atch until you see the Tsuras Vlad, the form, the shape of the, of the baby that's born, you don't give your child a name. Because why? When a child comes out into the world, even if they're a few seconds old, Something very strong about them and their feet in, is in their features, and you want to have you want to help children connect to their goal in life, to what they're supposed to do, and we know that our names play a very big role in our lives as directors as to what we're supposed to be doing, where we're supposed to be going. So he says that it, there's a way to tune into the features of a child, to, to what the child is going to be by their features at birth, mamish at birth. He says, You could see, is this kid going to be a Chacham or is he going to be a little bit of a Chacham? Not, not so much of a Chacham. Is he going to be someone that runs to do the right thing or it will be more of like an Atzlan, laziness, Atzel. Now look what he says here. Kibadorot HaRishonim, back in the day, Haya Zot HaChokhma Mephoreshet Beinei Kol. Everyone knew how to... This was a chokhmah that everyone had. Even Lavan. Everyone had this chokhmah. You saw the, the shape of your child coming out. You knew, oh, that's, this, this is the name. Shayu mekirnim beparzuf avlad ma sheye midot tiv'o. You could see in the parts of avlad what the teva is. What the teva would be. Now, what's very cool is when the name that you were thinking of for your child... Mamish matches that which you see, that's the highest. That means you were really in tune with your child before it came out physically into this world. You following me so far? Yeah. Well, you guys, even more than bringing children, it's like just getting names is probably like a whole, uh, <laughs> especially this avoda, just, just figuring, just nailing that one down. Because it's such a big, he's saying over here, such a, this is such a big Indian. You know, we, we don't, like, with Weinberger, you should know, it's very, very big on names. My brother-in-law, sister-in-law, I speak to him about the names. We do also with the names, because it's not a simple thing. It's a very big thing. The names are a very big thing. But back in the day, there was a chokhmah that people would see the child, they would know. Even Lavan. So that's why he's saying over here, let's understand what Rachel and Leah mean. Because Lavan had this chokhmah too, and he saw something in her that, that kind of pushed, like brought brought out her name being Rachel in this world. 
וזה גם כן מה שהיה לבן קורא לבנוסף שמות כפי שהיה מכיר בטבעם של כל אחת. לבן כאן אבה, אתה יודע, אתה יכול לומר מה שאתה רוצה עליו, אבל הוא היה איזה כאן אבה קונקשן למידות של אבו דודר. זה מה שאיש בצד עושה. עכשיו אנחנו נעשה רחל, אנחנו נעשה רחל תמיד. שם רחל מורה ש... אוחזת קנאה וניצחון בליבה ואינו מוציאה בשפתיה. רחל, the name רחל alludes to that she's holding on to not jealousy in a bad way, God forbid, but jealousy in a, in a, in a holy way. More like a קנאת סופרים, if that makes any sense. How do you say קנאת סופרים? Uh, holy envy, I guess. Um, She was holding on to, on to that in her heart, and the tzachon, and triumph, but she wouldn't let it out of her mouth. She held it inside. She held on to something in silence. K'mo sh'neh, mar u k'rachel l'fnei gozazea ne'elama. And like Rachel, before its shearers is silent. Like a, um, sorry? Like, like a sheep is silent, In the presence of those that are coming and shearing off its layers, there's silence there. That's, that's, that's what it comes from, Rachel. So what do we know that Ishbetzi says that Lavan knew about Rachel that we're going to see later in her life? She knew how to hold back. And what a midah that is, to know when and how to hold back. Because holding back in light of very, very serious... Tests in Emunah is a very hard thing. And it, it, we, we have no idea really when, exactly, like I said before about the timing. But there are times when things come our way and we have to hold on in our hearts saying, Ribbon Ashleinam, I have holy envy for those that don't have tests like this because they're able to be a better Eved Hashem. That's the holy envy. I envy those that don't go through what I go through because it seems to me They have an easier way of becoming Avdeh Hashem. However, in my heart, I'm holding on to silence because I have so much to say. If I started, I don't know where I would stop. That's one level. Where do we meet Rachel and her silence? Who wants to give a shot? When do we meet Rachel and her silence? Anyone know? Let's go to Reb Shlomo says. Everybody knows that Yaakov and Rachel had a little secret between them. Rachel and Leah looked so much alike. They were built the same. They looked the same. They even had the same voices. Lavan says to Leah, I'm putting you instead of Rachel. Yaakov will ask you who you are, and you will answer, Rachel. So Rachel had a deal with Yaakov. You will ask me at night who I am, and I will say Leah, and then you'll know I am Rachel, right? I know this sounds confusing, but it's not. Story, right? All Rachel had to do was not say anything to Leah. Leah was just going to say her own name anyway. But Rachel made a point to say to her sister that when Yaakov will ask you who you are, don't lie. Why, why did she have to say that to her? What do you think? Why did she have to say that to her? What did, Leah, what did Rachel think that Leah might do? Say that she's Rachel. Nice. Oh, sorry? Except the Why? Because they... Yaakov didn't trust uh, Lavan. And because she knew that Yaakov loved her. She knew that. Imagine what she felt in that chuppah, right? But she knew that. So she says, so Rachel says to her, listen, do not lie. I know, we know where his heart is. Do not lie. This is yours. She makes a point out of it. Okay? Shlomo says, when I was a little boy, my father would point out to me every Shabbos v'yitze. It says, v'yihi baboke v'hine hi le'ah. She really is Leah. What does that mean? She never said that she was Rachel. Yaakov couldn't even say that she was lying because she really was saying that she was Leah the whole night, meaning in order for a Kenyan, an acquisition of Kiddushin, to take place, you know what can't be? Lying. So there was absolutely no way of Yaakov and Leah, Yaakov getting out of this marriage because he asked her who she was. She said, what... The truth, even though that was also the simon, right? But she said the truth. <clears throat> so the question is, what was Rachel doing that night, meaning the night of Yaakov and Leah's wedding? 
And if I had to, you know, I always go through this, you know, when it comes to these parashiyas, if I had to choose to be a fly on a wall in a certain episode in the Torah, which one would I choose? So what do we usually say? Give me some big stuff. Like, what would we, where would we want to be? Kelas Yitzchak. Kelas Yitzchak. What's another? Doesn't have to only be Bracious, huh? Har Sinai. What else? Kelas Yamsuf. Kelas burning bush. Uh, I always wanted to be there when Yosef reveals to his brothers who he is. Yeah. That's a pretty strong one, no? Yeah. What else? Let's, let's, let's have fun. Let's, let's... Hakirna. Huh? Hakirna. Of course, you go to Yehuda and Tamar, the, the most simple you know, story in the... The most Mashiach of the story we have. What else? Ilana, what do you choose? Huh? Tevat Noach, yeah. Absolutely. Let's leave, let our imagination go there. You know where our heart would want to be? What's that? Gan Eden. <laughs> nice one. Going for it all. Sweetie, I'm sorry to bother you. This battery ran out. This one's about to die. I have by, my, by the bed. I have a few of like these kind of ones I'm going to plug in. Thank you so much. Um, one, of, one of the ones that we really see that show up, uh, like our hearts, in order to understand how to do anything in this world and how to get through anything in this world, you know what our hearts would want us to do? It would say to us, you want to know how to make it through the troubles, the nisiones of this world? Go to that night where Rachel is crying her eyes out the night that the love of her life is marrying her own sister. Can it be more of an Isayan than that? Can it be more of an Isayan than that? Is there a greater Nisayan than that in the world? Than that night? Thank you so much. Thanks for Thank you. Sorry? She knows that she could have prevented it. And yet, and yet she knows there's hashgacha. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Where our hearts would say, if it was up to our hearts, and we say, okay, you choose for us which story in Tanakh should we go to, it would all take us to Rachel's room that night of Leah's wedding. What, what, what do you think she could have... Where, where was she? Where was her heart? Well, okay, she knew this, that everything's Hashem, Hashem, it's all hashgacha. She has all the right answers, and she's heard all the right tairas, and about Nisiones and everything, but... Where, where is she that night? So look what he says here. What was Rachel doing that night? Give out how much she was davening. Rachel mevake al banea. As much as Leah is the mother of Mashiach, Mashiach won't be able to do anything without our children. And who is Mamash the mother of our children? Rachel is the mother. Because whatever she davened for on that fateful night is bringing Mashiach. Uh, now this is a typo. Rachel, not Leah. <coughs> Rachel is the first Jew who felt disconnected from Yiddishkeit on the night that Yaakov married Leah. She didn't know that one day he will also marry her. So on that night, she felt that she lost her connection to him. And Yavah was she praying, Ribona Shel Elam, I don't know how. I don't know how, but please connect me again. Sometimes we feel there's no way to reconnect, but... Rachel Mevaka al This is the prayer that is bringing our children back to Yerushalayim. So he didn't really explain here what her tefillah was, but all we know is that if we went into the heart of Rachel Imenu that night, would be that Ribona Shleilam, Aleph, I don't know anything. Bet, I, don't, I still don't know anything, but I'm feeling something in my heart. This kills. This kills. This burns. This is touching every part of every Nisan I've ever been through. This is so, so difficult. But yet I know that if I speak up right now, I know, she knew, she was in a via. She knew that she's messing and tampering with what? The storyline. She knew that Leah had to be in the picture and Yaakov needed to have children with Leah as well in order to form Beis Yisrael. How many children does Leah have? Well, she starts off with four and gets really excited, right? And then she has a few more. How much does Rachel, how many does Rachel have? She has the two and she dies when she gives birth to the second one. However we look at this story is that Rachel had to remain silent in protest of the story with Lavan 
and Yaakov and, and her sister, and she's sitting in her room that night and she's saying, Ribbana Shleilam, one day, I'll, one day I'll speak. One day I'll scream. One day I'm mamish gonna let it out. But tonight, it seems that you want me to cry, but I know that you're crying with me. I know you're crying with me. Bechol tzaratam lo tzar. The Ribbon HaShlelem is with me through every tzara. That's the night of Leah, of Rachel's silence, where she doesn't mess things up, and she lets that very, very crazy story take place because she's plugged in to the bigger picture of all the Shvatim. She can't understand it, but she's silent. That was the night of being silent. Now let me ask you a question. How do you know when you're supposed to be silent like Rachel Imenu? in our own private lives. Does anyone have any aces? When you're just supposed to be like, I don't understand why this is happening, but I'm not going to start to tamper with things, it just is what it is. Did you ever, I'm asking seriously, did you ever, uh, uh, you ever go through something where you knew the avoda was? Shh. Sheket. Yeah? Do you want to share? You don't have to. Not so much. Does anyone want to share a moment like that so we can ex- explain to us what that feels like? I've told you a story. The first project I had here in Israel where that crazy, that we were moving these huge planters from the rooftop and it fell onto the oh, yeah. garden and I hung up, I got the call from the angry neighbor and I hung up the phone and I almost started to like say, why are you doing this to me? And I stopped myself because of the teaching that, that we were, the learning we were doing with you. And I just thanked him for it. And I said, I don't know why I'm thanking you, but I appreciate it. Why, why, why did you let yourself, how did you let yourself go to that place? I was, I don't know, you helped me there. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Okay, bad example. No, 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 it's a good example, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> There's no, nothing good that can come out of that. That's just negative thinking. There's nothing, you're assessing blame. Like you said, we don't understand why. Were you plugged into a bigger picture while you were about to lose your first job in Eretz Yisrael? I can't say that I, I just felt like there was n- nothing good that could come out of it and that I knew that even though I might never understand why it was good that that just happened. I did ask Hashem to maybe one day show me and then he did about two hours later right. why it was good. Right. <laughs> that was pretty incredible. So then, no, that's a beautiful thing. My, my question still is, was anyone ever able to shut down legitimate anger or crying out to Hashem that this is unfair because somehow they sense that one day they'll be able to get their answers or make sense of what so they're no going through. inspired me. When my, uh, my whole business partnership fell apart, right. fell apart, I was still in it. The silence. But I do think one day it'll be clear. Well, what keep, so what is it? What is that, what does that voice sound like? Help us. Like, what does that sound like? It's a perfect plan. For some reason, there's other things that I scream out about, but this, and this was probably the, the most, um, one of the most dramatic things right. that I've gone through. But not to hold grudges, be quiet, right. and to feel deep down that one day it's going to be clear. And it touches on a, such a personal level, like, he, like, like Rachel's own sister marrying her, the love of her <laughs> life. Meaning we're, ta- we're talking here not about like, Hard levels of emuna of why did bad things happen to certain people? It's touch. It's touching me. It's touching my home. It's touching my my basa. And yet there's a there's a time in life, Rachel Imenu teaches us. Hashem's crying with me. Okay, that's one side of the coin. But then there's this another side of the coin. And I think that's the side of the coin that I'm praying our Prime Minister of Israel tunes into tonight with his decision making. And that is the time for screaming. Again, I want to reiterate, not pchas v'shalom by endangering one precious yid. We are very, very, very powerful. We are shackled down by the world's opinion on so many levels. Not one Yiddish and neshama should ever be endangered, God forbid, specifically tonight. But there is a time of screaming. Yaakov Avinu helps Rachel go beyond herself, where she was catching herself again going to that place of, I'm not even going to dive in for something because if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. 
We see the same motif happen by Yosef the Tzaddik. He ends up, he's such a Tzaddik that he believes so much that being a Tzaddik means I just makabe what Hashem does. Yosef the Tzaddik could have stayed in prison his whole life. Why? Because if Hashem wants him to be in there, he'll be in there. Until we find, the Midrash tells us, he reached a night where he was screaming until when are Avram Yitzchak and until when is Avram's great grandson going to be in jail? Even he reached Kate's Balachoshech. At a certain point, you have to scream out. And we need our spouses to help us with the timing. Yaakov helps Rachel very much in this, in this way. And look at it, another thing that happens in our parasha. The only one of the three fathers who ever got angry was Yaakov. Yaakov got angry with Rachel when she said to him, if I don't have children, I will die. That's what she says. And Yaakov got angry at her and said, am I God that I'm not giving you children? Am I Hashem? Meaning, what is he really saying to her? Go daven, right? Right. Don't talk to me about it, but talk to who you should to who you should talk to about it. So everyone says that if a woman is, by the way, how, how compassionate does that sound? <laughs> just right, like this is like <laughs> grab our bearings. I mean, Yaakov Avinu, the ish mamish tiferet, he has chesed gvura. They're both together. And he's Titan Emes Lyakov, and here he, he gets angry at a woman that can't bear children, especially his own wife. So everyone's asking. Everyone's saying that if a woman is crying because she has no children, even a low rotten creature shouldn't get angry at her. Certainly, Yaakov, who was the pillar of compassion, should definitely have had pity on Rachel, his own wife. But according to Hasidus, let's do this big Chidish here. Yaakov didn't really get angry, but he realized that Rachel wasn't praying yet because she thought, I have such a holy husband, he'll pray for me. We don't see that, by the way, in the previous generation. Rivka is an Akara. She's not relying. She's relying on the fact that the children she'll have will be holy, like we learned last week. But the tefillah that she should become pregnant, she very much was plugged in to the notion that she needs to daven for it. Rachel still doesn't understand that yet. She says, my husband's Yaakov Avinu. This man worked for me for 14 years to be with me. I saw what kind of a tzaddik he was. I heard stories. Remember, they were cousins. I heard, I, I heard stories about this. I know how holy he was. It was a family tradition how holy he was and how unholy his brother was. So I know how holy he was. So I'm not going to daven because... If I'm going to get pregnant, it, there's no way in the world it's going to be in the schus of my tefillahs. I'm banking on him to daven for it. So Yaakov pretended to be angry so that she would say, Oy vey, I can't even depend on Yaakov anymore. And we see that after she wasn't relying on Yaakov anymore, she prayed herself and her prayer was answered. I think the Lashem there is Vaishma Elea Elokim, that God, Mamish, Listen to her. But what was Yaakov, you know, helping her do? You know, we learned every time we, we learned about the Avot and Imahot. Their job in life was not to reach their potential. It was to go beyond the potential. It was always to go beyond their Midah. Avram's Midah is Chesed. What's the beyond Midah of Chesed? Gvura. The Akedah is Gvura. Yitzchak is Gvura. What's the beyond Midah of Gvura the other way? Chesed. What does it say about the Akeda, after the Akeda? Yitzchak brings home his, his wife by Ye'aveha. It's love, it's Chesed. Each of them are going the other way. Yaakov, we see his Inyan is Emes. And what is he tested with in life? The other way, the other side. Having to trick, having to rob, having to run away, having to steal. Kivyachon. Rachel too. I'm not sure what her Midah is exactly. I'm not sure what her Midah is. But one thing we do know, if we look at the beginning of her life, shh, I had to go, maybe this is just my way of going through life. By just not davening, things should change right now. Let it just be what it is. Yaakov sees, if you continue with that same path, you know what's going to happen? <clears throat> Am Yisrael won't have Yosef and Binyamin. Yosef at Tzadik. Am Yisrael won't have the pillar of Tzitkus in this world. He won't have Binyamin, who is in his chilek, is the Beis HaMikdash, Yerushalayim. So Yaakov has to pretend to be angry in order to get her to talk to the boss. And she does. Yaakov helps her go to that other place of knowing 
when is it time to mamish be loud? So I didn't think we would be able to get here this fast, but I'm kind of happy about it. If there are any questions, please ask me now. If not, we're going to be able to understand this last piece we just did a little bit clearer. With, uh, don't get alarmed by this. It's a, just one paragraph by last year's with Biederman. When you get the page... Sorry. So you see on the bottom, did everyone get, by the way? I have more. I have more copies here, whoever didn't get. Beans, you got? Okay. So look at this page. Look at, you see the Ot Gimel over here on the bottom? Ot Gimel? Okay. Look at the Ot Gimel. Mi'inyan le'inyan. Katava Ramban al Rachel imenu. Bezel Shonal. This is what the Ramban says. Behine had tzadeket, the holy tzadek is Ra- 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 Rachel. Bir ota shelo tuchal hi samech al tfilas Yaakov. When Yaakov makes it clear to her, do not bank on me davening for this to happen. Al tismechi alai, this is your thing. Shava lit palel al atzma el shomea tzaka. She got back to herself and she started screaming out to the one who hears screams. And that's what it means in the Pasuk, that God heard her. She, he, he, Hashem heard her crying and brought about her getting pregnant, bringing Yosef a tzaddik into the world. And it's like in order to bring the tzaddik, in order to bring that light, that precious, powerful light, what has to have to happen? You can't bank on anybody. Even if you're married to Yaakov Avinu, you cannot bank on anyone, anyone, anyone. Sorry, just I see that they're mamish the whole south right now. We have to de- learn very strong right now. We need the tzaddik to come down and give us strength. So the Rabbi here is going to bring a mashal, a parable, which will help us understand about the timing issue. And when it is time to scream, how do you scream? How do you scream to Hashem? Mashal lema hadavar dome. Leani hamechazer al aptachim. Shebedarko nakash al daltot beto shel ashir ha'ir. A poor person who went about to go and collect staka from the rich man of the town. He comes to the rich man of the town, he knocks on his door. He got the rich man's ear. The rich man gave him something. Um, he really, it says here, even he, he got to his heart and he gave him something. And what happens to this poor schlepper? He figured, he finds, you know what? My, my, my brother Boris, or whatever, whatever his name is, the other guy that I meet, like a, like a schlepper late at night under bridges, he also went to uh, that same rich guy's house, and he received from him an even larger sum than what he, that, that guy gave me. He gave him considerably more. You understand what he's saying? Two schleppers. The first guy here is, I thought I got a good gift. I found out what he gave the other guy after me. I can't believe this happened. What he thought was a lot, realized wasn't so much. And it's the first schlepper is having a hard time with this. How could it be? Third line. He asks him, Why did you give me, was my appeal so much, you know, was my presentation more shvach that I got less? You know, that happens quite you know, very often in the fundraising in the fundraising world when you hear how different people gave different institutions this and that. It can cause them a sugar. cause you to be crazy. What did I do wrong? What did I say wrong? Why does he like them better? Does he not like Chabad? Does he not like Breslau? Does he not like this? Like, what is it exactly? It can drive you crazy. Why did I get so little? But he got so much. He asks him that. Yeshiv lo agvir. So the rich guy answers him and he says to him like this. 
ובדרך חידוכך פנית אליי. You are running or you're going around the whole town. And while you're on your way, you came and you turned to me. וידעתי היטב כי בדעתך להמשיך לקבץ נדבות משאר בני העיר. But I knew that once you left my home, you're continuing down the street to other people in order to continue and collect. You can see where he's going with this, right? על כן לא ראיתי כל צורך להעניק לך כל מחסכורך. Therefore, I didn't find it a need to give you, to fill in everything that you needed. אלא המשך בשלך הוא פרוטה לפרוטה מצטרפת. Meaning, I would say, like, you'll, you'll be fine, you're going to continue. So I gave you something, but I saw that the way you asked me, or something in the manner in which you indicated to me, that you're going to keep on asking from other people. אבל רעך, but that guy that you're ticked off at, that guy that got much more than you, he came to my house, he gave me the clearest picture about how much he's missing in his home. He doesn't have bread to eat, he doesn't have clothes to wear. And he let me know clearly I'm not leaving until you fill me up with everything that I need. His words, I felt very responsible. His words really struck me, and I, feel, I realized if I don't give him everything, for him, it's like he got nothing. For him, it's like he got nothing. Even if I give him 90%, if he's not able to come back with everything, He feels as nothing. His words got to me. The achrayus got to me. So I gave him, I gave him what he had to do. Kach hem advarim. Lemi shel pone le askan ploni shi azreu. Ulachar mi keni gash gam ule dido asheni. So too is to someone who goes to a certain gvir to help him. Then he goes to another gvir to help him. And then while he's, that, while he's doing that, he also turns to Hashem. Meaning Hashem is like number two or three. He's like on the list. Even if Hashem is number one, there's still, I know there's two and three, right? Ulam enav lamarom ve'omer, but someone that turns his eyes to Hashem and says, Avi sheva shamayim, Ein lanu melech ela ata, I have no king but you, ve'rak be'yadcha le'ozreini u'lesancheini, it's only you that could mamish truly help me, And if you don't open the gates of help and salvation, there is no other help and salvation. Even if that guy gives me a little, that guy gives me a little. This person is answered with utmost compassion and salvation. You hear what, the, you hear what this mashal did? This mashal is saying that Rachel Imenu had to understand that when it comes to the things that matter most in life, even if you're married to Yaakov Avinu, even if you're the chassid of the biggest rebbe in the world, even if you come from the greatest yichus in the world, and that's where you put your hope in the help, even if you get a little bit, it'll feel like nothing. In order to bring down Yosef at Tzadik, Yaakov Avinu told to Rachel, do not bank on my prayer. I know that in times in life, Your avoda was to be quiet, but it could be that that set you up to be able to scream like you never screamed before, which is where she finds herself, saying, I will die. I will die if I don't have this. And Yaakov Avinu says to Rachel, go and tell that to Hashem. What could be more thought-provoking? What could be more earth-shaking than hearing a woman say, I will die if this doesn't happen? Go and say that to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But if Hashem is number two, or number three, or number four, on the list of people that you go and ask help from, you're, not, you're missing the whole point. You see, the secret of knowing about the timing is knowing that even when you're in such pain, and you think, if only that person would have hurt, wouldn't have hurt my feelings, I would have been okay, you also don't understand anything. Because that whole thing was from HaKadosh Baruch Hu as well. The salvation 
is also all from HaKadosh Baruch Hu as well. These themes that we keep on seeing throughout the stories of the Avot and Imaot lead us to one thing. Rachel Imenu is the master of Emuna. She's the master of Emuna. Having Emuna doesn't just mean that I'm supposed to live in a state of it will be okay. Having Emuna means that I believe that there are times to be like that, but that there are times when even the holiest people in the world will pretend to be angry at me in order for me to turn on the, the switch inside that says, now it's screaming time. Now it's screaming time. Without getting too personal in my life or in anyone else's life, we all know that the moments that we have to turn on for screaming time, those moments define us pretty well. When I say screaming, I don't mean being angry at God, just to be clear. Screaming like this guy says here, I know if you don't help me with this, I, will, I could go to all the shrinks, I can go to all, read all the books, I could take all the right doses of whatever it is I'm supposed to be taking. But if you don't help me, I have nothing. You know, when we reach those places, those moments, hopefully we don't reach them before we sink too low. Remember, the secret of life is to not reach it before you sink too low. It's to start from that place. Not bidiyavid. That my lechatchila, my default spot, is to start my journey by saying, it's a beautiful day in the neighbor, right? And how are we going to keep this beautiful today? Only you can keep this beautiful, Yibon HaShleilam. It happens that we usually, we sometimes reach that place much later as well. But look at Am Yisrael. Look at all the diff- look what look what our, our country has done with all the different tovot. We thought if we're good to that country, then that country will help us here. If we do that, we'll keep on davening while we do this. But if I strike a deal with them and I help stabilize that economy, then then that'll be okay. And and now we're 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 living like sardines. There's thou- thousands and thousands of little kids going to sleep in shelters again because. We didn't start from a place of saying, Avi Sheva Shamaim, Elano Melech Ela Ata. Now, when you go to that place, don't expect a miracle either. What's the answer? What is the miracle usually? Not a miracle of, oh, I'll just give it to you. But it's that you have enough courage. If you had enough courage to come to me and scream to me, I'm going to give you enough courage in Olam Asiya to do what you need to do in this world. That is, what, that is the Shlemut of Emunah. It's not that if I scream loud enough, the miracle would happen. It's that if I scream loud enough, the Rebbe Shalom says, Oh, up until now, your avoda was different. Okay, you were Rachel Imenu, Leah. I get it. You were younger. Things had to work like that. But you're hopping it. Now, it's screaming time. Yes. And if you have enough holy chutzpah to come and scream to me, that means I can count on you. That means I can count on you to give you the koyach, that you should be your most, your most incredible shaliach. We're learning with the, with the men in the morning this, this, this holy, holy sefer of the, of the PSS, and the Chobos of Talmidim. And what we've come to the last few weeks has been that essentially a, a mechanech, an educator, how do you really get to a child? How do you know if it really worked, if chinuch worked as a parent or as an educator? if you were able to instill within a child that at the end of the day, they must become their own educators because at the end of the day, they have to live with themselves more than anyone has to live with them. So if that's the case, you become your own educator, you're gold. If you can get, give that over to a child, it seems to me that this is what Yaakov was trying to instill into Rachel later in her life. At this stage, how old is Rachel when she passes away? Very sad. I think Rachel Imenu was 38 years old. You know that? She was very young. Rachel Imenu was 38. Interesting age, huh? Who else was 38? The Tzadik Yisad Eilam. The Beinu HaKadosh, right? It's an interesting age. Not, not just the... Not, it's Bichla those years, 36, 38, the Ramak, or Moshe Kredavero, the Arizal. A lot of G'doylim. It's around that time. You see, it doesn't matter when it happens to you in life. Sometimes you have to live 70, 80, 90, 100 years to be able to scream to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to finally get it that God says, ah, I could trust you with the tzaddik. 
I could trust you with the tzaddik. And this is the beauty of the world of Rachel Imeinu. We need both sides of the coin. Be'ezer Hashem Barach, we will be able to internalize this amazing teaching that Yaakov taught Rachel. And we should have enough guts to go home tonight and look at that which we know needs to be screamed about. Don't start doing all the cheshbonos of trying to understand why you haven't screamed about it till now. Because you'll just be ending up with more and more cholent in the mind. And go for it. And go for it. B'schus Rachel Imenu. L'shem Hashemayim. L'shem Am Yisrael Hashem. I'm screaming to you so that I could be the best Yid in the world. I'm screaming to you so that I can bring down a Yosef Atzadik into this world. Now, if that is not part of why you're screaming to Hashem, then, or that, it, or basically, you could, you could also figure out what, what are you asking for, what are you screaming about, and maybe you'll realize that this is not something that's worth screaming for. But you got to go through this process to know what is worth screaming for, and when. It seems to me, again, this is just feels to me, that because nothing in the world is making more sense. There's not one piece of any puzzle that's adding up the way that we've learned to make, to add and subtract. Everything seems more of a sugar. But this is the time for screaming. It's the time for davening. Like, when I, I mean, like real screaming, always like we never had before. And when I say screaming also, don't think I mean like, you know, Nebuch screams. One time Reb Nachman said, oh, in front of this guy, and this Yid said to Reb Nachman, why, why, do you, why do you crutch so much? Reb Nachman says, what do you mean? He says, you say, oi, oi. He says, ah, if you knew my ois, you'd be able to hear how much simcha is in each oi that I give into the world. Our neshamas are the happiest when we let out a krechts. Again, it's not how could you, Ribbon Shleilam. It's please, 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 please let it be already. Without trying to make cheshbonos of why it took so long, let it be, whatever that it is, so that I can be a faithful servant to you. I think I shared with you, tzaddikim know how to, how to ask you questions. And based on the questions, you can basically make a list of all your priorities in life based on how they ask questions. One year I was sitting by Rav Weinberger, and he said to me, is what he asked me. He didn't ask me anything else about my life besides the following question. He said to me, are you making enough Parnassah in order to learn with Yeshiva Das? That was his way of figuring out where I am. Not, 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 it, was, it was his way of me figuring out where I am. How, when I look at money, how do I look at money? How much Yeshiva Das do I have? How, what am I working towards? Are you making enough money in order to learn with Yeshua Vadas? And then you see this, what the, the screaming and crying to Hashem provides us with the ability to understand our priorities, to understand why we're asking what we're asking for. Rachel Menu, are you screaming because you just want to be an ima, which would have been a legitimate scream, right? Or are you screaming because you want to bring down to the world Yosef Tzadik for the sake of Am Yisrael? That's what Yaakov squeezed out of Rachel Imeinu. That her understanding why she's davening for what she's davening for. So Alavai, we should do homework tonight. Don't look as petrified as we all look right now. But my God, I should take a picture right now with these faces in here. Everyone in here basically stopped looking at me to like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and then when you did, you give a little like this. Went back to here. I'm thinking, like, well, I will never come back here again. <laughs> ever again. Oy, one more nigga, one more nigga to scream. Oi, 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 oi,
Next week we're going to be away. We'll continue the week after. Bezat Hashem. Shukrayach. <laughs> I would have told I you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's too, she covers the whole. She how much covers everything. I'll see you. You'll be around tomorrow morning. Shia. That's like a leave it to your, you know, right. Inter- right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. right. Yeah. right. Yeah.